Welcome back to Red Glasses Talks. Well, for the last number of weeks, we've been looking at the benefits uh, of the Bible. And we've said, you know, it's never too late to become a man or a woman of the Bible. But now we're going to shift somewhat and move to talking about how do you become a person of the Bible or the book or the Word of God? How do I actually begin to experience those benefits in my life? So in order to do that, we're going to have a little introduction here, and then each week we'll have a different aspect of helping all of us to become a person of the book. So what, it, what comes to your mind when you think of the word worldview? Basically, it's how you view the world. Th through what glasses do you look to view all of life? Is it the world's view of the world, the culture's view of the world, or is it the Bible's view of the world and of life? Let me give you a definition of worldview. Your worldview is the product of all the information, ideas, and experiences you absorb to form the values, the morals, and beliefs that you possess. Now, for a Christian, a worldview ought to be shaped by your relationship with Jesus Christ and your relationship with the Word of God, the Bible. And so uh, studies have been done on this by George Barna in terms of the number uh, or percentage of adults in America that have a biblical Christ-centered worldview. This may shock you, and maybe it won't shock you, but the, but the studies say 91% of the adult Christians or Christians in America who claim to be uh, a follower of Jesus, 91% do not have a Christian biblical worldview. So that means when they look at daily life and the decisions of family and work and everything that comprises life, they do not look at how to respond and deal with life based upon the Bible and their relationship with Jesus Christ. Secondly, 98% of teenagers that claim to be Christians do not have a biblical worldview. So, you know, we wonder, why are we in such a mess? Well, we're in a mess, it should be obvious, because we're not operating and living life out of a biblical worldview. So let me give you some, some, some more research here. In terms of what the real problem is, just one in four Americans in the United States, as I said, is a practicing Christian. That's 25%. The next category, non-practicing Christians. These are self-identified Christians, but do not qualify as practicing. They don't worship consistently. They're not in the Bible consistently. That's 43% of Christians in our country who claim uh, that posture. Then there are non-Christians. These are adults who do not identify as Christians at all. That's 32%. Now watch this. When it comes to studying or reading the Bible, of uh, that group, 25% who claim to be uh, practicing Christians, only 35% of that 25% actually read their Bible or look at it once a week. So, I hope I'm making my point here, but the problem, I believe, uh, is not laid, should not be laid at the feet of people that are not followers of Jesus. I think that the problem needs to be laid at the feet of Christians who claim to know Christ, uh, but are not developing and growing and living out their faith through that biblical worldview. Dear friends, our country's in a mess. There's no doubt about it. Uh, from the Christian perspective, I believe our churches are filled with malnourished Christians. Malnourished. Many Christians are under the Word of God. In other words, they hear people preach and teach, but they themselves are not taught and committed to be themselves in the Word of God. All preaching and all teaching ought to point to Jesus, and it ought to equip people in the pew to become equipped to know how and motivated to know how to get in this book on their own. And so some, some of us been, have been spoon-fed for too many years. So um, 
you will not be healthy and growing personally in your life with Christ for his usefulness unless you become consistently a person in the Bible, knowing it, understanding it, and doing what it says. So here's the question for today. Are Christians destroying America? Well, how would you answer that? So I believe to a large extent our problem is that we're facing in 2021 is a result of a, a lethargic, apathetic, immature Christian culture. And if we don't see that change, don't expect a whole lot to change in the mess in our country. Listen to this from Hebrews. Hebrews 5, 11 through 14 in the Message Bible. I have a lot more to say about this, but it's hard to get across to you since you've picked up this bad habit of not listening. <laughs> wow. By this time, you ought to be teachers yourself, yet I find you need someone to sit down with you and go over the basics on God again, starting from square one. Baby's milk, when you should have been on solid food long ago. Milk is for beginners inexperienced in God's ways. Solid food is for the mature who have some practice in telling right from wrong. Friends, we got to grow up. We, we have got in our country as followers of Jesus Christ, we have got to become men and women of the book who open the book, who fall more deeply in love with Jesus, who understand what the scripture says, and by God's grace, move out and try to do what it says. Oh, boy, I tell you, what an opportunity we have today in our world to make a difference for Jesus Christ. You think about that.